Welcome to Ganawa Stream 6. This is Diasporic Diffusions and Multi-Genre Collaboration. It's the last night of Ramadan, Eid Mubarak. It's good to have you with us and to be observing with you. Unfortunately, we have just lost a brother um, near and dear to us. His name was Jason Madison, a musician as well, and among many who unfortunately could not make it here with us tonight. We honor him with this moment of silence and all who we have lost until now. Jason. Nala, night music from Black Muslim Morocco. Lail is the Arabic word for night. Lila centers around the night and the spirits who come with it. Al Maluk coordinate with the seven colors of Ganawa and range from the Holy Spirit in Islam to Aisha Kandisha and Aisha Sudania. This holy month. Ramadan focuses around the initial sighting of the new moon in April. And this astronomical sighting is why Muslim nations around the world, their flags feature the moon and the star. It is a sacred seasonal time that allows us to become closer to God and to truly appreciate the transition from one era of time to another, a deeper awareness that is Ramadan, is becoming a global shift towards, I believe, a higher power. And part of Ganawa is communing with that higher power and having a conversation with it creatively, but also religiously too. Many Ganawa are Muslim. Not all are, but it is integral to the faith because so many of the ancestral communities that make Ganawa came from Muslim nations and Muslim communities before. Malin Smayo is among many Ganawa who we love and have befriended recently. We appreciate them very much and we hope to hear more from them. Saha <laughs> Koyo!
left from hours before dawn to sunset. You essentially do not consume food or drink from before the sunrise to after sundown. And this dedication makes you hone in daily on attaining the spiritual awareness and clarity. And you appreciate what the creator has given to you this way. Suhor is served in the morning. The Hausa, they call it a Sahur or Sahur too. And then you have Iftar, the last night of Ramadan as the most sacred Iftar. This is by our friend Munir um, from Saleh Saha. And we love you as well. Continue to shine. And we're so thrilled to hear from you. Thank you. 
Well, it's my migration on the path, like a winding Sahara road. The homie, Benin. Katsina, Salaga, that's northern Ghana, near the Gomba, a road that was known for transporting many goods in the Western Sudan, the Soninke Empire of Ghana, Wagadu. Senegal, to the edge of Mali today, toward Algeria and Morocco. This Saharan slash Central and West African confluence created Ganawa. Libya and Tunisia call Ganawa the Bori cult. Orders like the Como Society were carpenters and sorcerers. Music makers and instrument makers who also designed with the other side. Jalis or hunters, musicians, and the Maninke empires and communities stretching from Senegal through Guinea and Mali, where many Ganawa come from, invoked Islamic prayers while honoring their community and retaining old African ways. The Manangoni, or the Mande Koni, the Malian Kora, and the Wolof Shalam are all regionally related to one another. Communities live next to one another and their lutes began to mirror each other's sounds because of the interactions that they would have throughout the Maghreb going through a lot of Central and Western Africa. There are around 100 or so Ganawa songs in the repertoire, and I found it very interesting that Jali's musical repertoire also includes about 100 songs. It seems that this is the primary blueprint, the basis for Ganawa songs today. These 100 songs that initially came from Maninke, um, modern day Senegambian, who also worshiped Islam but had beliefs of their own that predated it. Malams, much like Jalis, can play these songs for minutes or hours, maybe even days. Talk about a lasting legacy, right? It stretched across the African diaspora. It literally traveled from one part of Africa, um, the ancient regions of Zimbabwe and Kupankanawa and the Kano Emirate, to Morocco. And many of us did not stop there. We did not stop on the western coast of Africa. We traveled to the United States, and there many of the jelly country musician songs that accompanied nomadic peoples throughout the Sahel and then westward of the Sahara. This became blues music, right? What they call Negro spirituals, like Black spiritual songs, which had roots in the same bluesy, introspective music. Jellies are the singers, much like griots and they honor specific people through their songs, their voices. Whereas the drummers, like Kanawa, Ganga, they honor specific ethnic groups, events in history, the everyday person who is part of the Maninke, Hausa, etc., community that lives around them. The leaves are somewhat like the Malems. They hold more musical authority and cultural respect. The drummers are the accompaniment Kind of like the Ganawa Sidi Bilal are the considered the male counterpart who can enter the night and play gambrays. The drummers are the considered the feminine counterpart who accentuate the main points of the jelly story. This is an Algerian Diwan song equivalent to Ganawa by Malam Ben Aisa, who we heard in Ganawa Stream 5. Bori describes this the secret society that uh, Libya and Tunisia refer to in the Bori cult from Hausa communities in Nigeria far to the east.
This is Anya, part of the Red Sea of Kanawa, associated with the spirits of these waters. Simo is a longtime friend of ours from Rabat, and this is performed shortly after they arrived in Wales. Enjoy. <laughs> Yeah. 
Alsa, Sula, Togo, Manike, Songhai, etc. communities lived alongside Maghrebi or North African communities in Kumbi Sale, in Kino, Kumasi, Wangara, and more. Scholars like Muhammad al Akili from the Kingdom of Tlemcen, modern day Algeria, traveled from Northern Africa to West Africa for the purpose of Islamic ambassadorship. He essentially reformed much of Africa's Sharia to a more devout and nuanced but anti-Semitic interpretation of Islam. Al-Nagili wrote a treaty for King Rumfa Muhammad. Al-Nagili traveled throughout the Songhai, modern Niger, Nigeria, where Buala is, Buala being a song in Ganawa, but also a town in Niger. And we read about this fascinating, insightful research through North African scholars and their influence on Western Sudan kingdoms. You can explore the historical diffusion in my Ganawa playlist on YouTube below. The page for Ganawa 6. And about halfway through, you will see Ganawa with Nikki live stream, the first. It is the actual playlist that includes the videos for all five streams and more songs to help you understand the relationship between Niger, Nigeria, etc., and Morocco and Ganawa. The Kano Emirate was a Hausa kingdom, which was near Bouala, a town in modern-day Niger. Kufan Kanawa, the city of Black Kino, and Zinder are major ancestral routes for Ganawa because different independent Hausa kingdoms were warring with neighboring empires and vassals, the Maninke and the Soninke just being two, they would mine the gold and mine the salt in kingdoms like Ashanti and then be sold alongside the very goods that they had excavated. It was a very brutal and um, industrious trade human beings for thousands of calorie shells, cola nuts, gold dust, a site about Esuera and Ganawa overall, very in-depth, and we'll link to it at the bottom of stream six here. In 1760, with the construction of the harbor in the Medina, C.D. Mohammed bin Abdullah brought a lot of black slaves from Senegal, Gambia, the Western Sudan, and the actual country of modern-day Sudan, Ghana, to Esawira, and their songs tell about the painful march through the Sahara Desert, like I told you, and the sufferings that they endured of slavery, Oluvel Bambara, Bambara being a community in Mali who were not too far away from the border between um, Algeria and Mali. The Ganawa, the Suira, come from the Senegalese of the colonial era, and in the West are the Ganawa Sidi Bilal, the, the west and the, the north of Morocco. And some of these ancestors worked with the construction of the Suira in the 1700s. Others came through the Tombouctou caravans and the Songhai, the Malian region, were enrolled by the French army during their colonization in the beginning of the 20th century, the early 1900s. Now the Ganawa of Ganga, in the east, in the southeast of Morocco, the Dra, and the, the desert regions, such as Marzuga and Kamlia and Urtebi. They worked on the Sadi and sugar plantations and under Al Mansur for various imperial projects, um, building the different cities um, from Meknes to Marrakesh to, gosh, Casablanca. You can go down the list the Ganawa of Ganga, who would eventually migrate to northwestern Morocco, but started in this region, were the culmination of ancient, like regional caravansaray roads that actually start far out in the middle of 
Niger and Nigeria, the Ganawa Brotherhood, reside in the Zawiya, um, the Niantar. And this is the sign for uh, the Zawiya of Sivya Abdala. Zawiyas are shrines that are dedicated to the spirits within the Ganawa. And Bilal, being the first Mozan, or the believer to make the call to prayer, Atan, African in heritage, and the first to create the spiritual dialogue with his voice, the Ganawa consider him to be their patron saint. Very long, diffusive journey is how we have Diwan in Algeria, how we have Zar in Sudan, how we have the, the cult or the secret society of Bori that Libya and Tunisia refer to, and Stambali as well. We're going to listen to Malam Ben Aisa once again. La full Sahara based sound to Diwan, and then understand that Algeria was just one of the first stops for this style, and it would evolve as it entered the lands of Morocco. Themselves were displaced, enslaved, and redefined themselves by finding God plus their ancestral spirits along the way. So this first Gimbri player, the Maminke communities who had jellies for invocation, worship, and honor. From the oral slave narratives of Ganawa stories about the original history of the Gembri, gathered by a Ganawa music producer and just a general like um, cultural musicologist from Italy, Antonio um, Baldassare. In the ancient Sudan, but the Western Sudan, um, that includes Wagadu and what's now known as Ghana, um, a tribal chief's son, a fire worshiper, um, had a fight with his father about not wanting to embrace Islam so his village like exiled him basically and he lived in seclusion still remembered um the praises like the islamic praises of the the music of his homeland and the blessings of the prophet so it used to have two strings initially which is why we think it might have been the gurmi or the gurmi and people like initially like began to like gather and listen to them so that was probably the first Ganawi. He might have been Hausa, which is why we think the Gormi have eventually progressed into the Gembri. They added one more string to a two-string flute. The Gormi is a two-string flute from Hausa land. Or the Gormi in Niger. Or a Biram. All three of these, in addition to the Gambara of Senegal, are likely the ancestors for the Hajhush and Ganawa. We believe that the first Gembris were likely made of bamboos, which is why they're called Gombri, and over time became the Gembri in Morocco. It is fascinating how diffusion occurs over time and two cultures that were once separate become meshed together. Still their own distinct origin points and cultures, but now join. We thought you'd like to learn some uh, Hausa terminology to help you understand more of the basis to Ganawa and many of the words 
the meanings that once were lost, we can now look back upon. And Hausa means to become clear, it, it dawns on you. Perhaps Ganawa, when they speak of Waye, this ancient Hausa word, they're referring to making way for Amalu. Gariya Waye means the day dawns. Wayenchi means to make clear. Kawaye Mamu Avinan means explain this to us or explain this thing to us. Opinions are still varied about what appropriate Ganawa is and authenticity. Uh, uh, you've heard Nasel Gwane. They're one of the most popular bands from Morocco. And they're not Ganawa since Gwane is a secular folk style. But Adaraman Kirush comes from an Aswira family of Ganawis. And he initiated more learning as a Kasawi and Swiri apprentice and became a Malem at 16. Morocco's most popular band, arguably, had true Ganawa at its core. The national sound, despite years of secrecy and being banned. Mon spirituel Ganawi sounds like 1990s Moroccan Ganawa. Um, very familiar and nostalgic, but ahead of its time, all the same. And there is a very West African musicality in sync with the North African Moroccan sound. <laughs> Masawi master Mahmoud Ginia bridges an amazing and unique place. In Ganawa, they're real from their heritage in Mali and Guinea and Senegal to the Torka, the, the ritual knowledge of the Lila. And Guinea created music with Egyptian and French artists, as you see below here, and we'll listen to, and Aliyam Aliyam, the album in which you hear Yadi Yat. African-American jazz legends like Barry Sanders, Davi Torre, Karim Yad, and so many more have had a chance to collaborate with Malin Mahmoud Guinea. And I think that's incredibly 
telling that many of the the best Ganawa musicians, when you do hear them go mainstream, they reach a point where they're not afraid to branch out and um, play alongside other styles. was an underrated Gnawa group that came before Nas Matakech, if you've heard of them. They are a Gnawa slash world music group, whereas Maluk El Hawa was back in the 70s revival era in Gnawa fusion and Taganawit. Abdel Jalil Kotsi was the key founder of Maluk El Hawa, and Hassan Baska was too. Um, two Madakshi masters and um, very well known in Ganawa. The Baska family overall, Abbas, Hassan, etc., are extremely talented and you should really listen to them more often. The beautiful song, um, Anneksha, will play very soon. The difference between Maluk El Khwa and Nas Madakash is it's an audible journey, transition through Ganawa's changing eras and, and styles from the 90s to now, and then from the 70s with Maluk El Hwa to today. <laughs> Malan Zakaria is a Magnasi musician who you heard from in last stream performing Bulila. Amazing musician. They've taught us much about Ganawa and a few 
short days that we've met them than we feel like we've learned in the last 15 years. It takes a good teacher and a listening ear to really observe Ganawa. There's so much more to discover, but you have to be open and willing to do that, to invite that which is part of Ganawa, the unseen, but also knowing and supporting Maskey musicians. Listen to Balada here alongside Mortar, who is a well-known Ganawi in Morocco as well. Guala, we now know, is a town in Niger and the regions where Ganawa were forcibly taken and a spirit in Ganawa. <laughs>
Kazang and Sidi Ali bin Hamdusha's sacred Nusam to the northeast of Meknes this year. And this is the saint which all three, the Esawa, Hamasha, and the Ganawa, honor, but to sing for Hamdush is truly an honor that many of us will never know. And now music became a diasporic mixture like its people in Northern Africa and the overall continent. So fusion or non-Moroccan genres from Ganawi masters are common and often heard around the world. Malin, such as C. Mohammed Kalki, mentor Jimi Hendrix, and fondly remember learning from him at the same time that he was instructed. These diasporic relationships absolutely change music in the course of cultural history. We reach out and embrace one another and in that embracing our heritage and our past, we can take that pride and that cultural song into the future with us. I first took knowledge this way at a Maghribi bazaar as a child through this diasporic connection, but also this diffusion, which would place Ganawa alongside other styles such as rock, mahoon, soul, etc. And then later on in my teenage years, when I was 13, 14, and I had finally finished Cowboy Bebop, the series, and I wanted to watch the movie, I was reaching for deeper meaning and observing other faiths in Christianity, as we all should, we should all know the tenets of other faiths, even if we do not follow them. Cowboy Bebop, the movie released in 2001. The series documents a centuries-long journey throughout a faith. And in the late 2000s, Moroccans have reached Mars by 2071. Spike Siegel is a bounty hunter on a mission to find the next chemist named Rashid, who's Moroccan. Rashid actually finds him in the process. As they meet, you hear Ganawa, but it's Ganawa fused with jazz because many Moroccan jazz artists like Kareem Ziad are very extremely popular now. And it's showing that in taking to the sky in the future, the Ganawa has indeed become a fusion style that's still very true to Taganawi. Anime scene in which a Western European descended person is meeting a North African slash West African blooded person and trying to find a deeper truth to which Rashid says that he knows the answer, but that it's not going to be in the form that he's looking for. Ganawa is the same way. Perhaps it's not the answer that you expected, but it's the truth that you were seeking. Mm -hmm. Ganawa goes wherever the people do, even through COVID-19. And who is truly a Malem now? Can some Nuba respectively be left to memory, to time? Because some masters, even Si Mohammed Chalki, began to feel the physical effects of communicating with the supernatural and sometimes dangerous spirits that come alongside that. And does Ganawa's diffusion, no pun intended, <laughs> mean that Taganawi changes. Now this conversation began in Ganawa Taifas and it will remain there primarily. We're discussing that some masters are, are chosen and others appoint themselves. 
but that Al Maluk and the divine and the Ganawa community ultimately decide. Dries Yemda is awesome. They're an Agadir hero that told us after the coronavirus that they're waiting to play music. And thank you. No, Dries, thank you. And thank you, Ganawa friends, community, and listeners out there in Morocco, Africa, around the world. You are the reason this will never be forgotten. Take care of yourself, all right? <laughs> Thank you.